Rudal. Everyone, AFC Finners, I think you can take a guess at where we are. We've crossed the border to Wales. See Barry Town, a team we've wanted to see for a very long time. We came in a few years ago when games were still behind closed doors, had to walk outside their stadium. Somehow we didn't do it last campaign, but at long last, we're seeing them as they face Colwyn Bay in the Welsh Premier League. Tom, how are you doing? He's a big fan of Gavin and Stacey, so he's very happy here. So, just having lunch, we're going to wander around. It's 5.15 kickoff. In most of the games we go to are normally 3 o'clock kickoffs, so it'll be a nice change, gives us a bit of a line. Very excited to be in Wales as always. So, we've, last time we were in Wales was for Pennabons at the end of last season, hoping to continue doing more Cymru Premier games. But, you know, we've spoken to Barry fans on Twitter before, so it would be good to finally get us ticked off. They seem like a good community. It's a good area. You know, lots of people come here for tourism and to go down the beach on the fairground rides. So it's a nice place. I've always had fun here. So you'll find out a lot more about Barry in the history section in a moment. But they've also just got promoted. Let's hope have a good season back in the top flight. I know, I know I'll grab you now. Two seconds. Everything okay, morning? Yeah. Yeah, perfect. You made it? You made it then? Yeah, I made it. Yeah. 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 Rugby on, South Africa winning, some signed shirts as well. Pre-match football is the rugby here. That stand reminds me of that old Monaco one. They used to have the Super League final in. I believe that is the shop. A nice couple of ginger ales each. As the sun comes out, very exciting. Oh, ah, good stuff. So, we're about to go inside, but before we do, let's find out a bit about today's hosts, Barrytown United. Barrytown United were first founded in 1912, as locals looked to pursue having a team from Barry Island enter the thriving Southern League in English football, and the home of Jenner Park was built soon after. Whilst they started successfully, drawing many spectators, their plans were derailed thanks to World War I, with their captain, Major James Whiteman, losing his life in the Battle of the Somme. They bounced back stronger though, winning the Welsh section of the Southern League in 1921, having played over 100 matches that season due to participation in both the Western League and Southern League. Unfortunately, their subsequent application to join the Football League was rejected. They would spend over 60 years as members of the Southern League, and Jenner Park was on the first grounds to have floodlights in a 49-50 campaign. And in 1955, a 4-3 victory over Chester City saw Barry win the Welsh Cup for the first time. They left the Southern League in 1982 to focus on Welsh competitions. It was a wise decision as they would win the Welsh League Division 1 six times that decade, and after improving their stadium, were able to return to the English League system, joining the Midland Division. However, when the Cymru Premier was founded in 1992, Barry were expected to compete in the Welsh Premier League due to their ground being on Welsh soil. Many other Welsh clubs tried to fight this ruling, but Barry would ultimately end up rejoining the Welsh system. The 90s saw more glory follow, as they were immediately promoted to the top flight and sealed a quadruple of the Welsh League Division 1, the Welsh League Cup, the FAW Trophy and the Welsh Cup, the latter of which was won by defeating Cardiff City in the final. After one season, they became the first professional club in the Cymru Premier and won it for the first time in 1996. The campaign was bittersweet though, as both their chairman Neil O'Halloran and midfielder Matthew Holtzman passed away. That year, they also became the first Welsh side to go beyond the first round of a European competition. They defeated Latvian side Dinneberg and then defeated Hungarian outfit Budapest Vasutas before losing to Aberdeen on aggregate. They continued sweeping up the honours, winning a treble of the League, League Cup and Welsh Cup in 1997 as they reached 105 points in the league. Further league titles followed in 1998, 1999, 2001, 2002 and 2003, along with three more. Welsh Cup victories. However, the golden era would soon come to a halt, as the club soon entered financial turmoil due to their increasing dependence on prize money. They went into administration in 2003, being forced to hire a temporary management team and recruit amateur players. Stuart Lovering purchased the club, but turmoil still followed. They were relegated the next season, and as they lost their professional status, a leasing dispute saw them briefly move to Traforest from 2005 to 2006. 
Barry Chesterfield led them to promotion in 2008, whilst off the pitch, supporters campaigned for new ownership. Lovering announced his intent to withdraw Barry from the higher leagues, and he would do so in 2013, despite the supporters committee saying the club were happy to fulfil their fixtures. It was initially ruled that Barry would have to play recreational football from then on, but after legal disputes, it was decided that a fan-run Barry would be allowed back into the Welsh football pyramid. The revived Barry won Division 3 in 2014, and then won Division 2 the next year. Two years later, they returned to the top flight when they won the first division. They were qualified for the Europa League in 2019, the peak of their incredible resurgence. However, they were relegated in 2002, but won promotion three games to spare the next season under Lee Kendall. Kendall would resign as manager despite having just signed a two-year contract with the club. And now, under manager to Steve Jenkins, they're hoping to cement their place in the Cymru Premier once again and return to the top. Overall, they've won one Welsh Division 3 title, one Welsh Division 2 title, 10 Welsh Division 1 titles, 7 Cymru Premier titles, 15 South Wales Senior Cups, 6 Welsh League Cups, 1 FAW Trophy, 1 FAW Premier Cup, 4 League of Wales Cups, and 6 Welsh Cups. And a bit of trivia, after losing to FC Porto 8-0 in the Champions League qualifier, Barry Town United defeated the Portuguese side by 3 goals to 1 in a return leg at Jena Park with the Porto side containing the likes of Ricardo Carvalho and Helder Postiga. So those are our hosts, Barry Town United. Let's have a look inside their home, Jenna Park. So we've just come inside, unfortunately no pin badges available at the bar, but to be fair to them, the guy working there was like, look, sorry, but I'm gonna make some myself and put them online, so Fair play, they recognised the issue and made sure to resolve it. Lots of kids, lots of families coming out together. It's clear that there's people who've been supporting this club for generations. And you have to take your hat off to the Colwyn Bay fans. They've come on a four hour journey down here. And they'll be coming home very late, but fair play to dedication to the team. Look at all that, all those nice flags behind me. Sun comes out. They don't often get a sunny day in Wales, but it should be a good day. Tom. Hello. You've been bigging this one up for ages. What do you think so far? I can't say. Um, really good. Really, really good. There you go. That'll do. <laughs> we have got our spots right on top of the stand. Kick off slowly approaching. How feel, Tom? Uh, I'm feeling good. So half time here at Jenner Park it is a deserved lead for Barry. The only thing I'd say is wrong is that it's not more than one nil. Oh, Holy Mountain by Noel Gallagher. What a song! <laughs> Dance, dance, if you do that, dance, I wanna join you, you my man, band. I've got the lyrics on. Anyway, so it's difficult when there's such a tune on. Anyway, yes, Barry have been dominant. The only thing wrong is that it's not 2-0. They had a brief point where it was a massive scramble, hit the post, had like two shots cleared off the line. 
but I think it'll be a comfortable three points to the home side. Colwyn Bay haven't really offered anything at all. Half time, 1-0. She fell, she fell, ran under my spell. Oh my pretty baby, come on. So a Barry fan, the club's drummer, has very kindly agreed to the interview. Uh, start by introducing yourself. My name is Rhys Deans, Barry Town supporter, also a playwright. To fellow groundhoppers such as myself, what can we expect to find at Barry Town? Well, anything about Barry Town, I mean, you've got to look back at the history. Such a proud history and, uh, and I mean, the atmosphere here as well. And everything about Barry is the definition of true football. And I'm not saying, you know, trying to be big-headed as such, but, you know, at the time, Barry Town were back in the day because they were one of the best teams in Wales. I think one of the big, one of the big clubs in Wales, aside from the, uh, the, the, the five clubs that are playing in the uh, English league system. And for Barry, you know, proper football, uh, proper fans, you know, and just a good atmosphere and very welcoming as well. well what, what, um, you've obviously been supporting them for a long time. What's your favourite memory in supporting Barry? For me, um, for me, it was the qualification for, for Europe when we qualified for the Europa League back uh, a few years ago in 2019 because it was the first time that we qualified for Europe after, what, 20 years or so? No, nearly, no, about 15, 16 years and it was the first time that we've returned to European football and that going away and it was like three to 400 Barry supporters going to Belfast uh, to, to play and watch. Sorry, it was, I mean, oh, I'm so attracted to the so, so, Yeah, but it was that moment. It was just being back there. And, and one of my, fr my friends, Sam Lewis, bringing a taxidermy fox. You can have a look on YouTube and everything. <laughs> bringing a taxidermy fox. And we're doing a Congo all around the stands. Highlights, real. It is for the highlights. Brilliant. And finally, um, obviously back in the uh, Cumbrian Premier this season, yeah. how do you feel about the season ahead? It's tied well today. Look, listen, we started well, but we lost uh, our ex-manager, who I'm not going to go into. You know, he, he bailed on us two weeks before the season started. And in all fairness to Steve Jenkins, he's come in and... Oh! oh. Steve Jenkins, he's come in, he wanted to manage us, and he's, so far, he's made a, a pretty decent impression. But it doesn't matter if... Um, where we finish I mean we, we're just happy to be here and I think if we if we stay up brilliant you know and it's uh, I think because of the problems that are laid coming into the league system uh, coming into the season uh, this one um, I just think well we've got to be opti um, optimistic but also realistic well, that's the right attitude to have and finally you mentioned your play right where can people uh, if they want to come and see your work where can they find you so basically I'm doing a, a one man play um, from the 23rd to the 25th of August called Kino which is about uh, Fred Kino, the captain of Cardiff City, who won the FA Cup back in 1927. And it's about his life story. So from the 23rd, 25th of August, we're doing it in Tiny Rebel in Cardiff. And also on the 15th of September in Cardiff, we're doing our Little Man's Coffee. Fantastic. Thank you so much for taking no this way. Barrytown, you just did a chance at tune of Buddy Holly by Weezer. You've just earned a point for atmosphere. Goodness me. The fans have gone wild. They're coming in their throes. Good heavens. Unbelievable. Colwyn Bay against the run of play, if you pardon the rhyme. The Barry goalkeeper came out, headed in, and from range, Colwyn Bay have hit it in. It's a bit like that Stankovic goal against Neuer, if you remember. But out of nowhere, it's 1-0, all. all to play for. Barry won, Colwyn Bay won. Their four-hour journey has not been in vain. time here at Jenna Park and it does finish one all. Barry were dominant but just weren't clinical enough and they were punished for one mistake and not take their chances but we've had a fun day. Second half started really good but can't peter down towards the end but it's a fun day in Wales. Thank you Tom for joining us. Time for us to rate the experience. So, as always, we will start off with welcome, and I think they did well on this one. I'll give them a 7 out of 10. 
us an Englishman, I was a bit of an outsider, but people I spoke to were chatty, happy to engage, and I felt very welcome. It's a very good club bar where you can feel right at home, engage with people. Plenty of fans sat near us, and the fact that the chap I interviewed, I tried to interview him at the start of the game, but he was starting all the chants on the drums, so I couldn't at the time, but he came out of his way to find me and do the interview, so the fact he went out of his way to do that when he didn't have to was much appreciated. So felt like a very comfortable place as a ground hopper. I think the Balkan gets a solid 7 out of 10. Food and drink, unfortunately I'm going to have to be blunt with this because Barry really let themselves down with this. The options available at the club bar were really good in terms of food and drink. It was a £5 minimum on the card and it's just like, well, I just wanted to get a ginger beer, uh, which is two quid. I ended up buying a ginger beer for Tom and a packet of crisps I didn't need. And it's like, well, I could have just walked away and not given them any money. Realistically, if I want to buy a drink from you and you're saying, oh no, it has to be £5. It's like, yeah, but I'm offering you the money. I think that's really daft and they're shooting themselves in the foot there. And unfortunately, in terms of food, when you got into proper grounds, they let themselves down again. There was one kiosk in the corner of the ground. To be honest, I think they could have done with another one just to spread it out. This one, it seemed promising because I saw their chips and there was a veggie burger listed on the menu. So for once, they catered to vegetarians. But then I saw on the menu the words cash only. I'm sorry, there is no excuse to not take cards in this modern day. If Cribs and Cheltenham Saracens can do it, a club in the top division of Welsh football really should be able to do it. That really let me down for that because I ended up having to go to a chippy afterwards to dinner and it's like, well, the club's just lost business from me and, you know, from Tom and probably quite a lot of other people as well for the simple fact that they didn't have card. If I have a card with me, I have the facilities to pay you. It's your responsibility to ensure I can do that. I shouldn't have to go out of my way to go to a cash point. And so the Colwyn Bay fans, they come on a four-hour journey. The ground might be their only chance to get food. Otherwise, they might have to run to a chippy before quickly getting on the coach or train home. So it's really simple fixes. Get rid of the card minimum and accept cards on the food kiosk and you'll be fine for food. But those little things really that the club down for that I'm afraid like it was good that they had a decent vegetarian option available but it doesn't mean anything to me if I couldn't get it so unfortunately food and drink two out of ten could have been very different but hopefully Barry if you are reading this hopefully you can take what I've said on board and make those improvements going on to more positive things atmosphere they did really well for this one because I knew there were a decent set of supporters to the club but I was very pleasantly surprised how loud they were we sat on a separate side of the stadium for each half and behind us there were plenty of people chanting throughout the game gave loyal support were very passionate and fair play they know how to generate an atmosphere I wasn't sure how passionate the fan base would be I didn't expect it to be as many people who cared so much about Barry just because it's so near Cardiff I thought Cardiff might have stolen a lot of the fans from them but no fair play they knew how to put on an atmosphere and made sure to get behind the team throughout the game and the Colwyn Bay fans were in very good voice as well so a very good atmosphere very pleasantly surprised I'll give them a 7 out of 10 for that now the stadium I think in terms of the two stands that are there, it does what it needs to do. You have two stands that give a good view, are well covered, so they deserve credit there. I think what they've done with the club bar is actually good because they don't really have stands behind either goal. But if you wanted to watch the game from the club bar, you could sit there and watch it through the window. As long as you pay the entry fee, I think that's a fair deal. I understand it is multi-purpose, but I really think... You know, the other stand behind the goal could have done with maybe some seating or something because it's just not great with the running track. I understand it has to be there if it's multi-purpose, but you would hope it'd just be a better facility behind the goal other than a standing bit that really doesn't give a good view of the pitch. The stadium's in a really good location, right in the middle of the street, easily accessible, and there's decent views around side of the scenery. So I think, yeah, it's a decent stadium, but there are bits and where it can improve. But I think considering they've got a running track around it, they've got they've done a pretty decent job. So I'll probably give the stadium a 5.5 out of 10. And finally, value for money. I spent about nine quid on my ticket. I can't really complain about that. It only costs two quid for a ginger beer. So that's pretty good as well. Those were the only things I ended up actually spending money on in the grounds because I couldn't get a pin badge and couldn't get the food. But in terms of what I did spend money on, I think it was very reasonably priced. You know, I can't complain for spending that much to get into a game of the top tier of the country's division. So overall, I spent about less than 15 quid to go to a game. There was more stuff I wanted to spend money on, but in terms of what I did spend it on, I think it did a good job. So I'll give the value for money an 8.5 out of 10. So that was Jenna Park, home of Barry Ivans. As I said, great to finally get ticked off. 
definitely recommend it to people because it's in a really good location where you can make a day out of it. Go to the beach or the theme park or go and see the Gavin and Stacey mural if you like that. It's a good day and you'll feel very welcome. Very good place to ground hoppers. I've really enjoyed it. I'm sure I'll come back at some point. For all the flaws they had with the food options, they definitely made up for it in the other areas. So I'm not going to hold that too much against them. Thank you, Barry Island. I always like coming to Wales. I've been FC Finners. See you next time and stick with us. So go ground to ground. FC Finners out.